I'm Eva Alenokulo, uh, a PhD candidate for epidemiology with the Makerere University, Indiana University uh, program and uh, Global Health Uganda. I'll be making a presentation on the major disasters and emergencies in Uganda over the past five years. The objective of my presentation is to highlight the burden of disasters and emergencies in Uganda over the past five years and to highlight the areas that have been most affected as well as the numbers of people most affected. In Uganda, the office of the Prime Minister is responsible for preparedness and response to all the major emergencies and disasters. Now they have a list of uh, these disasters that they prioritize and in this list it includes accidents, fires, floods, flash floods, landslides, disease epidemics and outbreaks, droughts, storms, famine, structural collapse, pest infestation, drowning, rains, animal attacks, thunderstorms, earthquakes, infestation, intoxication and forest fires. However, for the purpose of this uh, presentation, I will focus on the five major ones, which are road traffic accidents, fires, floods, landslides, and disease epidemics and outbreaks. Now, accidents, uh, okay, accidents in Uganda um, are studied, are distributed based on regions this again is, uh, is under the Uganda Police Force and the regions that we have are Kampala Metropolitan South, Kampala Metropolitan East, Kampala Metropolitan North, Rizi, Greater Masaka, Wamala, Katonga, Sezibwa, Savannah, Kigezi, Greater Bushenyi, Kira, Busoga East, Busoga North, Elgon, Bukedi, Sipi, Malaba, Queen, Aswa, North Choga, Renzori West, Renzori East, Albertine, West Nile, Northwest Nile, East Choga, Mount Moroto, and Kidepo. Um, for the purpose of this presentation, we will focus on three districts, which is Kampala, uh, Masaka, and Bushenyi. I present to you in this slide a map showing Uganda uh, the three districts that have the highest burden for road traffic accidents as well as the distribution of health facilities countrywide. Now in this map you can see that uh, I bet you can hardly see Kampala because it's uh, covered up by a number of um, health facilities but this map shows that um, these areas that have the highest burden for road traffic accidents have a number of health facilities within them which, uh, which ensures or which you would expect um, because of this to have a quick response, quick and efficient uh, response in case of accidents. Now this slide shows the total number of casualties involved in road traffic accidents in Uganda uh, for the past five years, but specifically for the year 2013, 2015, and 2017. So the green line represents the year 2017, uh, the blue one 2013, and the red one uh, 2015. Um, so it shows, it basically shows uh, the burden in terms of numbers of casualties uh, by month over the three different years. And in this graph, you see that um, over time, the burden has gone down. With the most recent year, 2017, having the least number of casualties uh, annually compared to uh, 2015 and 2013. However, um, 2015 had the higher burden compared to 2013. And from this graph, you also see that um, early, early on in the year, specifically in January, January tends to record the highest uh, number of road traffic accidents. Now this slide shows uh, the number of casualties by 
type of accidents um, over time between 2013 and 2017. It presents uh, minor accidents, serious, accident, serious accidents, and the fatal accidents, which is represented by the red line. And from this graph, uh, we also see that over time, there has been a reduction in the number of minor, in the number of casualties as a result of minor and serious accidents between 2013 and 2017. However, the number of fatal accidents has gone up. It has gone up from about 2,600 to about 3,600 um, casualties per year. The other disaster that we're focusing on are fires. Now in this, uh, in this graph, I present to you um, the burden in terms of the casualties injured and those <coughs> that have died as a result of fires across the country. That is from 2013 to 2017. And um, next to the table, we have a graph that is just representative of the figures. Um, the source of this data is uh, the Uganda crime report from the Uganda police force. So um, if we see, uh, let's say, deaths or injuries that are lower than we would expect, we assume that not all, not all uh, casualties or not all fires are actually uh, reported in this report because this, what's represented here is, um, is based on the number of fires that are responded to by um, the fire brigade. So from the graph, we see that over time, between 2013 and 2017, there has been, there's generally a reduction in the numbers of those injured and died. However, there was a spike in the year 2015. But overall, there's a reduction in the number of injuries and deaths due to fires. This uh, slide, um, shows a map with the districts that have the highest burden of fires reported. This is in terms of the number of calls made to the Uganda Fire Brigade and the fires responded to. So in red, we see three districts. Um, there's Kampala, there's Wakiso, and uh, Mpiji. These have the highest burden of fires compared to the entire country. And then um, in terms of regions, uh, the highest burden region is Makindye that has, that reported, this, this represents uh, a report from the year 2017. So in 2017, Makindye received the highest number of calls for fires at 111, followed by Wakiso, then Kampala Central, Rubaga, Kawempe, Nakawa, and then Mpiji. And most of these fires are commercial fires, the fires that occur in structures and due to electrical short circuits. And the fires that also occur in makeshift um, housing structures. So here we see um, still the regions uh, with the highest burden of fires reported over time. That is for 2013, 2015, and 2017. And the regions that stand out um, in all the three years are Kampala District, um, Kawempe Division, and Makindye Division. These seem to constantly have high reports of fires. So another disaster that we're looking at are landslides. Um, 100,000 people currently are at risk of landslides in the Elgon and the Renzori subregions. For the past five years, landslides have ravaged Uganda in districts of Bududa, Sironko, Manafwa, Bulambuli, Namisindwa, Kasese, and generally the Renzori region, the southwestern part of the country. Uh, just to give us a bit of a picture, in October 2018, 36 people 
were left dead and hundreds lost their homes and livestock in the Bududa landslide. In August last year, about seven people were left dead, 20 families were displaced by landslides in Sironko, and about 200 uh, were displaced in Bududa district. In June 2012, eight people went missing and nine were injured as a result of the same. Here we see a graph, a bar graph, uh, representative of the burden in terms of the number of people displaced as a result of landslides between 2013 and 2018. Generally speaking, for the past four years, the burden has really dropped. Um, that is for 2015, 2016, 2017, and currently this year we see an average of about 300 displaced people as a result of, of um, landslides. Okay. Um, here we have a map showing the districts that are affected by landslides in Uganda over time. Um, for this, uh, we aggregated data for a long period of time, for about 85 years, that's between 1933 and 2018. So here we see the districts that have mainly been affected by landslides, and still it highlights uh, the Elgon region in the eastern part of Uganda, and the Renzori region in the western part. And then this map shows the number of deaths as a result of landslides. So floods are also another major disaster uh, that we are discussing. Floods are one of the major causes of displacement in Uganda over the years. Um, just to give us still a bit of a picture as to the magnitude, in November this year, flash floods in Kampala and Wakiso um, left five people uh, dead. In May still this year, uh, floods in Butaleja displaced about 2,000 people and caused the loss of 150 homes. In March this year, flash floods in Barara uh, led to the death of one person. In 2017, August, floods in Amuru district caused the displacement of 2,000 people. And in April 2016, floods in Kasese uh, displaced about a thousand people. This slide highlights the burden of floods over the past five years. To my left, we see a graph showing uh, the number of people that have been affected by floods in the past five years, and then to the left, the number of deaths as a result of floods for the past five, I mean for the past five years. The number of people has generally gone up. We see a spike in the year 20, between the year 2016 and the year 2017 due to the increase in the number of floods in the country. However, um, in terms of the number of deaths, there's generally been a decline which shows that probably um, the Office of the Prime Minister is doing a good job in responding to this disaster. Here we see a map uh, showing the districts affected countrywide by floods over time. Still for this map, we use the aggregated data for a period of about 85 years. That is back in time to about 1933. And in this map, we see the number of deaths caused as a result of floods over time. So the final disaster that we're looking at are disease outbreaks and epidemics. Uganda has been plagued with a number of outbreaks and epidemics. Examples of this, uh, in the year 2015, there was a huge malaria epidemic 
the northern part of the country that affected 10 districts. Uh, started was detected about June 2015 and continued throughout the year and the whole of 2016. The epidemic uh, prevailed. So in this epidemic, uh, we saw the burden increase grossly in terms of incidence from about seven cases per thousand population to about 113 cases per thousand population. And we saw the test positivity rates, uh, which is basically the number of uh, malaria positive tests compared to the total number of malaria positive tests increased to about 85%, meaning about eight to nine people uh, out of every 10 people tested for malaria tested positive. Then there was a typhoid outbreak in the central district of Kampala uh, that started in June 2015 that had about 1,038 probable cases. In the same year 2015, we had a cholera outbreak in Kasese with about 183 cases and another cholera outbreak in Hoima um, with 179 cases and five deaths. We had a measles outbreak in, Kaw in Kamwenge in April 2015 that reported 213 probable cases. Last year in October, uh, there was a measles outbreak in Nantonde and this year in August, a typhoid outbreak in Fort Porto. Yes, this is a, a slide um, just depicting uh, the major disease outbreaks in the most recent years, that's 2017 and 2018. Um, in both slides we see uh, CCHF, which is Congo Crimean Hemorrhagic Fever. Um, I think it's highlighted in red. Um, we see cholera still in both years. We see measles in both years, and we see a malaria epidemic around Noya and Kasese in 2018. So this slide just highlights the major outbreaks and epidemics that were investigated in, this, in these two years. And this slide shows uh, the major outbreaks and epidemics investigated in 2015. Uh, we see in yellow the 10 districts of northern Uganda that had the malaria epidemic. And uh, to my right, we see a photo just depicting the burden of malaria in one of the health facilities during the malaria epidemic. So overall, um, the approximate number of casualties affected from selected disasters annually. For accidents, we have about 16,504 casualties. So this includes the serious accidents, the minor accidents, and the fatal accidents. And for fires, as reported by the Uganda police, uh, we have about 91 casualties. For landslides, uh, based on the previous four years, we have about 372 people displaced as a result annually. So um, as a conclusion, uh, we suggest that preparedness and response for each of these disasters by all stakeholders should be efficient and contextual. And then there is a need for training as a must for all key officers in post-disaster needs assessment to foster efficient recovery of structures as a result of these disasters. Thank you.